about that. Hi everybody, welcome to another live question and answer and I'm glad you can join us and uh, as usual uh, like us on YouTube, uh, like us and subscribe, we appreciate that, although we're up to about what, 8,000, Patrick? 8,000 subscribers? Over 8,000. Over 8,000 subscribers. We're really loving it. And we've got some really interesting uh, comments and uh, emails from our YouTube, some of our YouTube fans that I think you guys might find very interesting. But I did want to mention before we started, sorry we're late, but uh, we're under a little bit, we're hoping, we have great hopes so that when we open up again uh, across the world, actually, um, and in our little part of the world that we will have um, business and uh, we're so we're not only we're so hopeful that we actually start a little renovation so if you turn the camera around you can be able to see some of the things we've, we're doing we're painting it's very bright, uh, we're <laughs> flooring down uh, we're just gonna you know with, with the great hope that uh, when we reopen that um, we're gonna be busier than ever and I do believe that so Patrick, I do believe that we're going to be busy. Um, I think that the upholstery business is going to have a resurgence like you've never seen before. And the reason I say that is because I think that um, a lot of people, I think initially, once this opens up again, so once we open up again, initially uh, people are going to be calling because they've spent a lot of time at home and a lot of uh, time to look at their old furniture. Um, and maybe they're going to have time to think that that will be a good thing for us. But Beyond that, I think um, I think that there's going to be a real void in imports. I have a feeling that um, our consumers are going to look to us workers, us American workers, with with new vigor, and, and we're going to be better uh, suited, I think, to do more volume. I think we're going to. I see myself as a teacher. Uh, I'm glad that I'm on YouTube teaching, and, and one of these emails I'm going to read to you. It's quite interesting that somebody has actually learned. They're on their way to the, a trade based on just the YouTube videos, which I have to be honest with you, the YouTube videos really weren't designed for that. But this person's pretty pretty uh, resourceful. She's, and I'll read it to you in a minute. But she's she's really um, able to reupholster, and she's doing some really good work. Uh, but the online classes, I still I think are the best, and we do have some comments about the online classes too. I think they're your best. That. And I'm going to highlight the reason why on this chair, if I can get to this, um, hopefully I can get to this. We do have a lot to read today, and as usual, you guys just ask the questions, and uh, I will be interrupted, no problem, with live questions. We like the live questions, and I want to, I want to hear from people uh, across the country and across the world how they're coping and you know where they're at. Uh, today, uh, was it today that they opened a little bit of Georgia up, Patrick? Um, what, no one of the states, one of the mass, one of the uh, United States opened up some of their businesses like hair salons, hairdressers, and uh, polling alleys and things like that. We we pray that that's not premature, but I do want to hear from other people from other places um, and how they're doing. You know, especially when it's related to the upholstery and business. And um, I'm really especially wanting to know about maybe Pennywise can check in in Canada to see how. Commercial <laughs> upholstery. Did he check That's in? Just his name now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like to see. I'd like to hear from him because uh, commercial upholstery, especially, I think, is going to be hit. Um, but I think it, they're also going to be Andrew busy. That. When what's that? Andrew's his name. From Andrew. I like Pennywise. As long as he likes it, you know, I'll yeah. Like him Andrew from Canada. It would be great if you could get touch touch bases to see where your business is at. I'd like to know because. I think that we're all been hit, but I would imagine uh, what I noticed with this COVID-19 is, um, as far as businesses go and closing, the first people were the restaurants. And I know that you guys do a lot of restaurant work and nightclubs and things like that. They were the first to go and pub. Erica just checked in. Hi, Erica. So I, I'd like to I'd like to hear about that. Even if you guys hobbyists, I, I'd like to know are you get are you guys having a hard time finding supplies? I know that I did. We did a YouTube video on how to make a mask. How, we, we did a double fold mask, and actually, you know what? Um, I don't know if I have one handy, but I thought they came out nice. And you know, it's funny about like everything else. You get better and better and quicker and quicker at those and finding different ways of, of um, you know, getting fast. And 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 so far, I've done a few of them for friends. Um, and and I think I think Patrick's got got one. So. This is one of the first ones I did actually. I didn't have many fabrics here, 
um, that was suitable for the mass. Um, I did find one that was not scotch guarded. And if you look at the YouTube video, I talk about that. But there's also a little filter in this that, um, that was good. This fabric was not scotch guarded. It's a little heavier though than the cotton. So um, then uh, Michaela brought in, uh, donated to us some cotton fabrics that were perfect. And we made a few out of that. They come out much better. They're easier to work the folds over here with the machine. Um, but you know, this is a pretty good mask. I, I would use this. Let me take my glasses off. The pr only problem I have is, is my, my glasses fog out. So I did want to mention something else. Um, my niece, let me just put that on for a minute. We got a question. But my niece down in Norwood, Massachusetts, I think she's either started or she's big, uh, very involved in making masks. They just did, you're not going to believe this, you guys. They just did their 5,000th mask. So that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Oh, Jimmy's here. Jimmy, hi, Jimmy. Did you hear what I said? I have a niece in Norway who's, uh, that's called the, no if you guys want to go on Facebook, I think it's called Making Masks in Norwood, Massachusetts, and check that out. My niece uh, is involved in a group that's made, get this, 5,000 masks of all different varieties, too, I think. I, didn't, I think they do more than just this one. So isn't that incredible? I mean, my hat's off to her and that group. Um, so check it out. Uh, we have a question? Yeah, um, this is from Erica. She says, Kevin, I would love for you to do more segments on hand stitching, especially in visible places like front corner. I struggle with this. Mm. When she says she struggles with it, um, there could be a couple of factors, or she's being too hard on herself, actually. When we do hand stitching, we do it not so that it looks like a machine stitch. Does this make sense? I think I have noticed my students, I, I, I kid with my students. My students do too good of a job with the hand stitching. I said, you make it look like a, it's, it's a machine stitch. You know? So there has to be a little imperfection. So I would say don't be too hard on yourself with the hand stitch because I love it when I have to hand stitch a piece and the client says, what's this puckering over here? That's hand stitch, man. That's what you. That's what you want. You know. That's. It, it, believe it or not. I, this. Is, this sounds funny, but it's almost done intentionally so that people know that you took the time and care to hand stitch. Does that make any sense at all? So I suspect that Eric is trying to be a perfectionist here Hello. in a spot where perhaps Hello. she doesn't need to. Right. Hello. So. And there's a, another question. I'm on the live YouTube. I'll call you back um, in an hour. Yeah, this is from Ashdown. Yes, please. Uh, greetings Bye. from Ireland, Kevin. Everything's still locked down here until the 5th of May. Wow. Uh, wow. Pam says hi. Pam says hello. Hi, Pam. We're we gonna, have Pam's post. We're going to show that. We're going to be showing your post, your, your featured work. You've got a big fan in Jimmy. Jimmy loves your work, as, as you know. And, and is there more? Uh, Monique. Monique says, hi everyone, from an intelligent lockdown, Holland. Mm-hmm, Holland. Um, and then Jimmy asks, <clears throat> what is the method of layering after you tie the springs? I may have a new project soon. So, the, the order of spring tying would be first the jute webbing, which we recommend over, over, over the nylon webbing. The springs are attached to the jute webbing either with a hand stitch or with the clinch it. And then you, you, you're up to the hand tied uh, with the jute uh, ties, right, Jimmy? And over that, essential is burlap, not a substitute. No substitute on the burlap. It has to be burlap. The burlap has been proven to be the only material that works over springs, especially eight-way tie springs. People have tried nylon, they've tried remnant fabric, they've, I've, seen, I've seen cambric, I've seen no nothing, which is even worse. And the reason the burlap, first of all, that you put anything over the springs is your base layer, is that you're filling in the rest of the gaps that the twines don't actually cover. You know, there's, there's gaps. So the burlap covers that. And then over that, Jimmy, you're asking about... Let's assume Jimmy's asking about an upholstered seat, although he doesn't specify if it's an upholstered seat or, or a cushion seat. It's a big difference, right? On an upholstered seat, Jimmy, um, ideally over the, over the burlap would be a tri maybe a, if it's an upholstered seat, a triple layer of horsehair, believe it or not. 
So hand picked horse hair. One layer, hand stitched, two layer, hand stitched, I mean hand picked and hand stitched. The third layer, and you and you go up bigger needles each time, right? You start with a small, like a three or four inch curved needle, and hopefully you have a big curved needle like I have up here, like a six inch or a seven inch curved needle, and you go all the way up. And then what you do over on, after that, you put a muslin over that. That's that's the old fashioned way, right? And then cot and then you fabric, or two layers of cot and then you fabric. Now, the modern way would be a replacement, would be the bottom layer would be rubberized horsehair over your burlap. And then maybe if it's a, depending on how big the piece is, if it's a side chair, maybe one inch foam on, a, on an upholstered seat, or a two inch foam if it's a bigger chair. It depends. The scale, scale is very important when you're doing these things, right? So if you have a big chair, that you, have, you need more foam. You need more of a seat, right, to, to fit the scale of the chair. This, is, this is, takes experience sometimes uh, to know the difference. Uh, to what, Because what you're essentially doing, you're at home, you're baking. Jimmy, I know you bake. Um, Jimmy does a lot of stuff, and one of them I know he bakes. You look at, you're looking at the, you know, the ingredients for the cake. You leave one ingredient out, you know what happens. You have a flat cake or a cake that just blows up in the oven. I don't know. I'm not a baker. <laughs> but it's the same thing with upholstery, really. You leave out one key ingredient. For instance, Jimmy, if you did the upholstered seat and left out the burlap, in about a year's time, the top of the seat's going to, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, it's going to look like a checkerboard. Actually, you know something? No, I guess this one isn't doing it. But, but uh, that's what it looks like. So one key ingredient, one ingredient out, and you're going to have a different, uh, different result. Okay, and that's another good reason to uh, the online classes. What I, I push the online classes a lot because um, we take you through each process, as it, and, and, and the questions are asked, right? Whereas in the YouTube video, they not so much. Um, but any more questions before I get to some of the comments here, or, or comments on your end? John from Waterford, Ireland. Oh, I wanted to. Well, he did. He was the one who said that there was lockdown until right. May fifth. But um, he also says, "Is John here from one? What, what size needle do you use for buttoning, Kevin?" It depends on the. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing a big sofa, it has to be a big, and you have to go through a lot. It has to be a big needle. So I have different sizes. I have a 14. I think it's a 14 or a 16 inch needle for that application. The smaller side chairs, I go down to you know 10 inch needle. And I would definitely recommend uh, not to get a double pointed needle. Okay, you're talking about a button needle, by the way. That's, that's a button needle. I don't like the double pointed needles because sometimes you have to push this way and you forget. <laughs> Done that more than once. I have it closed. I'll show you what I mean by that. I, I know you know what I mean, but maybe other people don't know. So this, this, is, this is the loops on the top and it's the dull part of the needle and this is the sharp part of the needle. Some needles are double pointed and the, and the loop is down in here. Okay, now for speed, for this, there's a purpose for that, for speeding up, but I don't like it. I like to be safe and use this. The other thing I want to mention, when you're doing button work and you're pulling the needle through, be very careful that you're not pulling like this. You'd be surprised how many people pull the needle through because you have resistance. Always make sure you're off to the side. You're pulling with one arm. If you can't pull with one arm, you need to tackle it with both arms. Make sure that you're well aware and there's nobody around you because what happens a lot of times is you're pulling and then all of a sudden it lets loose and your follow through, you can go all the way around on your follow through, so just be careful. I've seen people do this and I, I don't advise it. So that's a good question, needle size. Because I was talking a little bit earlier with Jim about Jimmy's project, I was talking about curved needles. So that's a straight, a straight button needle. So let's get going to some of these questions that we have. This is on a, a do-it-yourself upholstery eight-way tie instructions, which was an older video that we have on YouTube. And um, Robert says, I sure enjoyed that. When the student is ready, the master appears. <laughs> thank you. And, and thanks, Kevin. That's good. So that's, I, I love it. I, I also like the critics. There, there's some critics out there. If you're nice about it, please. Um, but, you know, we can always improve, every, every one of us. Um, and I'm always looking for, somebody was commenting on how to explain cuts last week. And um, I was talking about everybody has different learning uh, styles. And the person who was talking had a really good learning style for somebody that can visualize well, right? But I find most people, and I mentioned it last week, can't put images in their head like, like I can. I'm blessed that way. 
So you have to, if you're a teacher, and I think what I'm trying to do with, with each student that takes the online classes is I'm, I'm adjusting to their learning style. Okay, I get to know them and how they learn. So that just kind of smooth things out so while you're watching it. But you'll notice that my style changes like Jimmy, between Jimmy and Michelle, I have a different style. Okay, because they're both two different learners. Well, they're male and female, right? <laughs> so they have two, that in itself, but their learning styles are much different. So, but the, the comment was a good one and was a good suggestion. They were talking about doing this because they were saying, why not? Well, you'll have to see last week. I can't remember exactly. You <laughs> posted <laughs> But, well, Jimmy posts us on the... <laughs> Jimmy, what, is it, is it okay to say, Patrick? Yeah, but it's like, so Erica's name is the omnipotent mama. Yeah. And Jimmy says, hi, mama. That's how he, that's how he says hello. <laughs> <laughs> hi, mama. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy's a good guy. He's got a good sense of humor. He's wacky, huh? Yeah, we miss him. We miss him. He won't be live today, and, and uh, our studio audience is not going to be here at all because, you know, we're like the Ellen Show now. We're doing everything on our own. We got rid of all the people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. I was like, wow, you did good setting everything up, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so this one here is a video I did. I have to be honest with you on this one. Crate and barrel fitted paneled arm. I struggled with this, and you can see me struggling with this on YouTube. And I, I almost, I asked Patrick at one point, "Let's take that down." I don't like, I don't like how I had to uh, work that and finish it. But you know, the fabric that was used was a very difficult fabric. It was like a laminated fabric on that job, and um, you can see me struggling with this. So I guess, I guess we're going to leave it up there for you to see that even even people who've been doing things for a long time do struggle with with projects and I guess the point would be be careful what you pick out or recommend for fabric uh, for, for jobs. I mean um, this fabric was so hard and I had to do that and I got a comment from another upholsterer and it was I didn't like he was being critical but he was also being a little mean. And I'll tell you what he said I think he said if I can remember he said um, we arrested. <coughs> he, he said I'm repairing hacks like you have, hacks like you and you are work all the time. When was that? I'm a I know, I know, but I, 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 I was hurt. <laughs> Only for a minute. And then I, I realized if he had just worded that a little differently, and I did respond to him, I said, you know, we can't, what I said back was, we can't always choose the fabric that, that we use, that we get hired for, for a piece of furniture. This was a COM, I think, custom is own material. So. so just be aware of that, you know, if, if you have a fabric, that's hard to work, a laminated fabric or leather or faux leather, those are hard materials to work. You might want to up your labor costs and, uh, because it's going to take you at least 50% longer to do, you know, so. Um, we're going to keep that up. Why, why would I, I, mean, I, I think actually there's a lot of good lessons in that for you guys. Anyhow, uh, Gregor. Al Svensson has done, oh, this was the, the restoring. Yeah, that was a good comment. Yeah, restoring a vintage 1950 Al Stefson Danish chair. And Alf had done lots of nice Swedish furniture. Nice to see they get taken care of with the thumbs up. Nice restoration. Well, thank you. That was I, a good video, a popular video. I really appreciate that. The difficult thing about mid century furniture is that, I mean, when mid century furniture came out, people were astounded, upholsters were astounded at what they were seeing because. Everything was minimized, and you know, you think minimized is easy, not, no, no way. So the challenge with, with the Danish, the early Danish, they used to use a lot of uh, latex material, latex foam, which is a very thin foam, and, but it has very high consistency factors. So um, but we don't use the, that latex anymore, the molded latex, because it proves not to hold up after a while. So what we have to do when we're doing a restoration is we have to replace that with foam, it, whether it be a quarter inch foam or half inch foam. But really, the, it doesn't. You have to be careful how you how you upholster that, how you pull the foam and pull it really as tight as you can. You're trying to get it to look like that latex as much as possible. The profile was amazing in how they did this furniture. Now I'll use an example: a womb chair. I have one downstairs, by the way, you guys. I don't think I can get it fast enough to show you, but you guys know what a womb chair is mid-century chair and the arms are really thin and pulled over tight um, 
and Noel is the one that makes the reproductions of those. So I can actually tell an original wound, they, same shape, exactly the same shape, except the filling has changed because they, they went to the foam. Same thickness, but I can actually tell. If you put two in a room and, and you know, I could tell if one wasn't faded, right? If one was perfectly preserved and the other one was brand new and they switched them around, I could tell based on the padding that they used, do you know what I mean? So that's a big challenge. That's a good compliment coming from that person because that's a huge challenge when you're doing mid-century furniture. I hope that makes sense. Have we, um, is there a mid-century, Patrick, on one of our online classes yet? Uh, not like we, there's one feature on YouTube. Yeah, we, we're gonna have to do an online class with the mid-century furniture. Well, it's just tough. It all depends on what um, you know, Jimmy and Michelle have. So. Right. Okay. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll do that in the new series. Yeah. Once this is over. Yeah. This that is could be, be one of the things. Maybe we'll find one. I doubt people will be throwing that away. <laughs> right. Thank you, Patrick. So we got another question, Michaela? We have a comment. A comment. Um, Erica says that I learned that cotton velvet with no give is a challenge fabric. I struggled with those blue velvet chairs but learned a lot. Interesting. Yeah. The, the, the worst fabric in the world. I'll, I'll give you some of the worst fabrics. Asian cotton for wearability. Uh, workability, I, I don't think it's a hard fabric to work at all. Um, the worst fabric I've ever had, silk velvet. Believe it or not, there's silk velvet. It's a beautiful looking fabric. It probably should only be used for a wall hanging. And even if you're going to use it as a wall hanging, you have to frame it because the ends curl up and to sew it is a nightmare and the stuff stretches way too much. I mean, twice as much as wool. So, you know, when we're advising people on the wool chair, for instance, you either need to use a solid wool or a wool-like solid. And ideally, this is what, uh, when you go to a, a company like Knoll and ask for a fabric for the wool chair, they actually spec it out. They have the specced out fabrics for each piece of furniture, each piece of mid-century furniture. So you couldn't, for instance, you couldn't put a plaid on a womb chair like this, an upholstery weight fat, uh, plaid on a womb chair, that would be a nightmare. I wouldn't even attempt that. So, uh, uh, and most furniture is like that, really. I mean, you look at this fabric. I'll get to this in a minute. This is this is another challenge. I want to show you a transition problem that we have with this and how these people. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm still. Uh, we have a lot to do actually in, in here. I hope I have time for this. But anyhow, um, so. Uh, sewing Machine 101. We did a Sewing Machine 101. I try to make things as simple as possible and on that one and then and we got a comment from Robert. Well, wow, glad I washed. Incredible resume. Thank you, Robert. Um, that, you know, like my teaching style, I like to introduce people in a, um, a way that's approachable. You know, if I started somebody on the mechanics of this machine, and was taking it apart and showing you the insides and how it worked and everything and then putting it back together again. I don't think many people would be interested in that, would they? Um, and besides, there's no reason to do that. Um, so I put out the features of the machine and some of the simpler things and I took it slowly on that one there and I think it's a good, I think it's a good tutorial for sewing machines. So check that out on YouTube. So the other, now we got a comment from Yaya. Yaya. Um, and this, uh, Yaya. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. American Vintage Sofa Stripping and Measuring for Fabric. That was a fun job. Uh, she says, thank you for such a nice video. We did, a, we did one, um, I, my, still my, one of my favorites, if somebody were to ask me, was that Civil War uh, settee that we did. So Patrick's got me in a, uh, he's got me in a Civil War hat, and I can't remember if it was the North or the South. That no, was the North, for sure. <laughs> But the, the sofa, you guys the should union, check the union. Right? The union. If you guys check check it out, because the sofa was, we, we, we traced the history. I love history, right? We traced the history back to 1863 to a town near Gettysburg, Patrick. Wow. Near Gettysburg. Down there. And, uh, and, you know, so we just imagine that, you know, life goes on, doesn't it, guys? I guess that's a good lesson with this pandemic, right? Life goes on. I'm still here. I'm still trying to, you know, get work where I can. It's kind of tough now, five weeks into this thing. Boy, it is tough, but... But I have great hope that when this is all over, the phone's going to, not only for me, but for you guys out there, you guys, this could be a good time to launch a career if you already haven't done so. Uh, I really do believe that people are going to be doing their own furniture, not buying new. 
I think this is a new age for reupholstery. And you guys are going to get brace yourself to be busy. And I'll be here to help you. Love to help you. Love to see people make money and, 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 and do well. And you guys can do well, I think. So what was I doing? I, I, I want to say something, something else, too, uh, about that. Yeah. Is that once we hit, I know we kept saying we are going to do a thank you for our subscribers after a certain amount. Right. I think at this point, we'll wait till 10,000. Once we hit 10,000, we should do something special with our subscribers. I think we should maybe have them send in a video of their work if they want to. Right. We can feature that on the, you know, what, oh, they, yeah. what you help them with. And we put that in thank you for 10,000 subscribers video. So yeah, once yeah. we get there, that's my idea for that. So if people want to you know, start sending stuff, we can include that in our thank you for 10,000 subscribers. That would be great. That would be great. Still a ways off, so we have time. But yeah, that's my that, idea. I think that's a great idea, Patrick. Yeah. Um, More of then we get closer. Do we have any other live questions yet? Um, any um, more? Just comment. Comment? You want to read those? Um, well, Pam responds to what Erica said about struggling with the blue velvet. Um, she says, I agree about the fabric impacting the labor. Um, or maybe responding to what you said. I was asked to quote a price for upholstering two French chairs. I asked to see the fabric, and I'm still waiting. Erica says, fabric with no give plus a newbie and curved back was a huge challenge. And Joseph says, yeah, I'm learning upholstery being busy with my car interior. Which is very cool. Cool. I saw some of the pictures that he uh, posted on his Instagram. So when you're looking, when you're talking about fabrics for applications, whether it be commercial, residential, automobile, and... I, I'll say slip covers. On slip covers, people are much more accepting of wrinkles and, and uh, things like that, right? Um, on upholstery, not so much. So the other thing, uh, Pim, when you, when you speak to a client, I'm sure you already know this, you have your work order out, and that's why it's very smart to see the fabric, because expectations, right? You want to you wanna, you know, talk about expectations based on the piece of furniture and the fabric that they selected. Um, so, for instance, on a, on a barrel back chair, uh, on our online video, um, I made sure that Michelle got the proper fabric, um, and we did a tub chair, and that, ha that has a dramatic curve to it. So if she did anything other than a fabric that didn't have a stripe in it and that stretched properly, we would have really had trouble. We had trouble enough. They're, they're hard enough. And so what we did, what it comes down to is I... Did we have any buttons on that, Patrick? Did we, do you remember if we put buttons in that? What was it? On that tub chair? Um, because that's the out. Um, you know, if you still have wrinkles remaining, to, the times you see buttons is to get the wrinkles out or, or kind of take your eye away from the wrinkling. So things like that. Uh, but I think this one didn't even need it. didn't even need the buttons. It came out so well. It was done, it was done so well. And the stretching was... You wouldn't believe how much you have to stretch a piece like that. You know, a slip cover? Just throw it over, just cut it, and that's it, right? So upholstery uh, is, is, I think, much more difficult than slip covers. I really do. But they're both skills and talents, aren't they? So um, hope it I was didn't. Pamela's uh, project first. That's the first one I have ready to go. Pam, Pamela's. Okay, so Patrick's going to put this up, Pam Bowen's uh, upholstery fabric. Um, so now she said she made... I'm going to read this. Made covers for a pair of wing chairs. It was very time consuming, but they came out pretty good for my first try. Can't wait to learn some tips from Bernice. Guess what, you guys? What you're looking at with this is a slip cover. She slip covered these wing chairs. I can hardly believe that stripe. That stripe one's a slip cover. Wow. I think, you know, Pam, if I do say so myself, I, 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 I'm just going to say something here. Your skills as an upholsterer has made you a better slip cover person. And I like to see somebody start with this with slip cut with upholstery rather than start with slip covers because the transition that transition to upholstery slip cover to upholstery sometimes is a little tough, and I'll tell you why. Because if you're doing it, let's say you have a ten-year career of slip coverings and you're just placing fabric over, right, and cutting, you you the whole thing that they've missed while they're doing that is how to stretch fabric over batting springs, cotton, and things like that. Because that in itself is a skill. 
and that that's what they miss uh, oftentimes I've seen slip cover people when they make the transition all the cover loosens up after a while because they're not having the stretching techniques that they that they would never taught they never they don't they don't know so I like to see the transition but I've noticed with the transition back the other way I notice projects like this Pam good job and we got a question um, yes this is from Lauren I'm wanting to start a Victorian settee what velvet do you recommend well, first of all, I need to know how long that is because what you guys have to remember is that velvets come, most velvets come off, the, the first thing I want to mention is very important, most velvets come off the roll at 54 inches with the nap, right? So if you, what you want to do with the settee, anything over 54 inches is make sure you get a fabric that's railroadable. Some velvets are, believe it or not. Um, so you might want to go to, instead of a velvet, go to a chenille, because you're going to get a lot more of chenilles that can be run sideways or railroaded. Um, but that's very important. Um, so I would recommend a chenille. A lot of people can't tell the difference between a chenille and a velvet anyhow. So the chenille will give you the same look, and you can run it sideways. That's why I'm recommending that. But you have to be careful with some chenilles that are not too heavily napped. Chenilles do have a nap, uh, but most don't. Most, most you can turn and run sideways. I um, hope that answers that question. Did that answer that question, Michaela? Uh, what what can you could recommend? She's looking for yeah. a recommendation for a velvet, and I think I'm telling her you better be careful that this isn't over 54 inches on the seat. That uh, you don't want to seam it. You know, you don't want any seams on that. But I'll tell you something. When I first started in this business, seams were was something that we did all the time because most fabrics weren't real. There wasn't such thing as a railroaded fabric. I, that's how long I've been around. Uh, but more fabrics today are railroaded, and what, what that means is that people are not used to seams whatsoever in anything. So they don't want to see a seam. As soon as they see a seam, they, they think not good work. And it's not the case really, but that's what, that's what most people feel like. You didn't do a good job. You had to piece it. It looks piece. So be careful of that. I would try to avoid seams today as much as you can. And I wouldn't do a velvet if, it's, if, if the settee is over 54 inches as a result, unless you get a velvet, uh, if you do get a velvet that's railroaded, if you're asking me, um, I would say, see velvet, synthetic velvets, like all synthetic velvets, have terrible roll marks in them, and I don't like that, so you'd have to go to a cotton, and look for a cotton velvet, I guess, if you're gonna, if you're gonna use that, maybe a 50% cotton and 50% synthetic, that's a good mix. Try not to get the velvets that have that heavy, lousy, backing on it that's that that's awful and that, and that you can you can get a cotton on the top of that and then have that lousy backing that heavy backing um, it's not always at all synthetic on that so I would look for a woven velvet you know they're usually very expensive um, that reminds me I would drape myself in velvet if it were socially acceptable <laughs> 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 Patrick loves velvet. Oh, I love sign. <laughs> so that that's good, Pam. I, I think uh, I can't believe the job she did here as a slip cover. This is remarkable, really remarkable. Especially now, I'm looking at the chair. The, is that still up, Patrick? No, it's been on. Right. But I can put it back up. You want to put it up? Yeah, put that back up again. I want to make a point of something. That she she's got something interesting, and she did a good job. It's the same. Use it up. Yep. So that, the chair on the left, she's got sloped, uh, paneled arms, right? I don't see a wrinkle on that. For a Are you talking about the big one? Talking about the big one. Okay. I don't see a wrinkle on that. Now, up at the top, I see a little wrinkle, but that, see, that's what I'm talking about. Your top wing there, that transition point on a slip cover, that's perfectly natural. People accept that. If I did that on an upholstered, or if you did that, Pam, people would complain about that, right? So. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. That needs all this stretching that you guys see me do uh, painfully sometimes all the time. Okay, that's good. Let's go on to some of this. Okay, I'm really excited about this next one. Um, this was from uh, this is from Canada, I think, right? Uh, do the, um, the one with the comments. Uh, the mess, the has comments. photos, Patrick. The one that has photos. You want me to do that one first? No, there's another one on there, another sheet. You want me to do that first? I think you already put it down. I got so it. the form, that's why I want to do the form stuff first. This, oh, I don't have anything else on the... Oh, is this a Bonnie? Bonnie's on the form? Bonnie's on the form? I see it. This one, though. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't that see was that. on the form. Okay, we got one more from the form that I kind of put aside. Sorry about that, you guys. From Madeline. She said, help with this chair. Would you know the name of it or when it was built? So I'm looking at this chair. I would definitely think it's a Victorian chair, a Victorian side chair. And I would probably guess 1860 to, you know, maybe 1910, somewhere in that area. And I've done these. This looks like, if you look at this chair from the side, you got the picture up there, Patrick? Yeah, maybe, maybe our, our viewers can help us too. Well, maybe the bottom, can. this chair was, the bottom, if you look at the bottom, it's just got a leg and not runners. This chair was also equipped with, or could take runners to make it into a rocking chair, a grandmother's rocking chair. So you would have a choice that the lady of the house, the salesman would come out and show her the catalog, usually with sketchings. This is way back, right, in the Victorian era. And the upholsterer would have his sketchings and show, would you like, would you like the chair with the, the chair with just the legs, or would you like it with the rockers, with the, with the runners? We can make it both ways. And so she selected, or whoever did, selected without the runners. So this is an interesting chair. It's a very difficult chair. A lot of mistakes made on this chair because it's a crown and it also curves out. And that's a problem, but we have a question. Yeah, this is from Tom. Hi, Tom. I just finished a couple different projects making new cushions. The fabric sprayed so much, I was concerned about the stitching holding. What can I do to keep fabric from fraying? Yeah, first of all, try to avoid a fabric that frays. That's my first, my first tip. I have fabrics that I hand picked here at the shop that there's not a one in this shop that has a fraying problem. And the, and the, and the, so, so, okay, you got a fabric that frays, you really do need to sit, surge all your stitching. Uh, unfortunately, that takes double the amount of work, but that's almost what you have to do. Um, or uh, before the fabric is worked on, you can have it backed. Um, knit backing, you send out for that. It's also kind of a hassle. I find that when you send out fabrics to be knit back, anything can happen. They send it out to the factory, they knit back, and they package it wrong, and it comes, or at the factory there's some staining. I mean, I've had all kinds of problems with that. That's why I've handpicked upholstery weight fabrics for my shop. Um, I don't use cotton cloth. Uh, I don't use fabric that will fray at the ends, you know. And I, I think a good example of that would be a Haitian cotton, would be notorious for that. Uh, that's a difficult fabric to work in that regard for cushions. Uh, cushions are, you have to make sure that, uh, one of the things about cushions is when we first started in the upholstery world, right, all the furniture had upholstered seats, upholstered panels on the back, upholstered seats, tight, and you close it up on the bottom and you forget about it, right? But then the introduction of cushions uh, create all kinds of problems with, with some fabrics because uh, the weight of the person, you sit on it and, you know, the seam gets stressed and you know, so that's why um, heavy upholstery fabrics ne are needed for cushioned seats. And uh, hopefully you don't have to surge them. Even with surging, believe it or not, with some fabrics, the, it, can, it can actually let loose, not at a seam, but in the interior of the cushion or, or the interior of the seat. You know, so you have to be really careful. Most people, I find, would, would pay a little bit more money for a, a better fabric if they're going to be giving you the money for labor. So keep that in mind. Actually, it's a good, not that you're doing it for a sales pitch, I don't do it for a sales pitch, but it actually is a good, it's a good point, isn't it? I mean, if you're going to put the money into the labor, you want it to last, listen, the average upholstery with heavy use should last 15 years. Moderate use, I'd say about 20 years. Light use, 30, 50 years. As long as you're picking the proper fabric out. I have seen fabrics, we're seeing stuff coming from manufacturers after three years, the fabrics failed. We, we see faux leather. Where, and that, where it's peeling off after a year, things like that. So, you know, beware of store-bought furniture. It's another good reason why you want to reupholster and push your reupholstery business on people. We've got so much to talk about good things in our industry and about how we help people and how our service, 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 right, you guys? And good work. Uh, you know, I see some of the stuff that I'm seeing my students coming out here online are unbelievable. I can't believe some of the work. I think you guys are doing terrific. So, and then Madeline says uh, at the bottom, how do I buy the rolls for the front of the chairs on the couch? She's talking about um, the, the uh, edge roll, okay? So you can hand make your edge roll. 
So it's not that hard. You, you could take a piece of burlap, about five or six inches wide, you can put co rolled cotton in, the, in the between there and tack just like this on this side. And you can use, um, you can stitch it too if you want, but just like this is stitched. That's how we used to do it. That's all we used to do is hand make our edge roll. This is just a convenience on the roll, so you can make your own. So put that up there. All right, now let's go to the next one. Unless there's more questions, let's push this over there. Okay, so this one, this is from Bonnie, and this is the one that uh, you're not going to believe. So Bonnie wrote me an email, and she says, Hi, I have watched more than 150 videos of yours and learned more than I ever imagined possible. Now, she's talking about the YouTube channel, all right? Um, currently, I'm 95% finished with a 100-year-old mahogany sofa, matchbook flats and iron paw feet and last photo in email. Do you have those photos, Patrick, or no? Uh, no, I didn't get hers. Right. She did, had a video, but we weren't sure if she wanted to be shown. Yeah. So. She did. She sent me a video, too, of, of something, but we'll get to that. Having almost completed six chairs, four wraparound dinette, and two arm side chairs. My husband tied original sofa springs for me by watching our videos over and over again. But he refused to let me use original horsehair or cotton batting, even though it was pristine and absolutely no odor. I, on the other hand, refused to throw it away. Checkmate. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so now what do I do? I've considered sending it straight away uh, to you, but, but wasn't sure if it would meet your rigorous, rigorous standards. I'll send photos of both. If you are interested in purchasing either one or both, Please let me know how to proceed. Are they weighed, measured, or what? I never thought I would be able to reupholster a piece of furniture that actually allow people to sit on and would be proud enough to show off to my friends and family. Only items left to finish on the sofa, the cushion, cording, piping, gimp, and cambric. Thank you, Kevin, for your input you can provide. I would certainly appreciate it. You are, you are only person professional whose opinion I trust help. Well, that's wonderful. So, Bonnie, I already talked to Bonnie about her old horse. Unfortunately, Massachusetts ticking laws do not allow me to use uh, somebody else's horse hair. I can use Mrs. Jones' horse hair that came out of her own chair, but I can't use somebody else's horse hair to put in Mrs. Jones. So there's probably a good reason for that, which you well can imagine. Um, so um, I, I, I couldn't use it, but um, I think she should save it. I think that's what I recommend. She should save it for maybe for another project, because you can clean. We've talked about cleaning horse hair. And we have a funny story we always mention about Jimmy's coconut fiber story, but that always keeps it always coming back up. It's getting a little old, right, Jimmy? Is he still on? Yeah, he is. <laughs> you know what? I just want to tell you when Jimmy does come back, we're gonna we're gonna have a big celebration here with Jimmy and Michelle. Too. And Michelle, but with Jimmy, I think we got a special thing that we uh, hopefully he's turned the volume down now, Jimmy, because I don't want you to know the surprise. But what we're gonna do. <laughs> We, you, know, you know how you go to, when you were a kid, you go into those, those play zones and they have the huge thing of balls that you jump in? <laughs> Needles? No, no. I've I, <laughs> I, I got it worked out. i got a connection to Hawaii, Patrick, to some, uh, like, tons and tons of this coconut fiber. We're going to fill up a big vat with, <laughs> with, with, coconut, <laughs> with coconut fiber. We're going to blindfold Jimmy and we're going to put him on the edge of it and we're going to throw him in. And he's going to love it because he loves coconut fiber, that guy, right? <laughs> Was that good idea? You're not mean enough throwing a pit of needles. Oh, oh no, that's mean. <laughs> I wouldn't do anything like that, Patrick. Okay, Jimmy, you can turn the volume back up. All right, so uh, let's see what else we got. But I think Jimmy is a good guy. I think he's going to like that little surprise. <laughs> so now we got another. Uh, is this the same one? That's no, a different one. Okay, this is from Canada. It's, I'll just read it. Uh, do you have the photos for that, Patrick? Yes, I do. Are they up now? Yes. He says, it's a he? Kathleen. Sure no, it is Kathleen. I'm not sure who's addressed by. It's bottom. Kathleen. Yeah. Hi there. Uh, from a complete stranger from Canada, I found your video on YouTube explaining how to add double well trim. And so I want to thank you for a wonderful tutorial. You're welcome. I've attached pictures of the chair, which I procrastinated on for over a decade. I picked it up at Goodwill secondhand for 45 bucks and 2000, in 2007 when I was broke. This past summer, I stripped the chair prior to attending a weekend upholstery workshop here in Toronto. Huge job, gazillions of ancient staples, layers of fabric, I had no idea. Finally, I was able to 
reupholster the frame in the workshop, but I only got so far before running out of time as I was warned by the case of a newbie. After having seat foam cut, the workshop was sold for months in advance, and so I pondered how to handle the cushions and trip. I ended up working with the kind, very skillful local upholstery man named Peter, who I hired to finish off the cushions and also double well piping. He attached on the front, protecting me from myself, but left the remaining welting for me to prep, cut, and then attach to exterior sides and back, which I appreciated given I wanted to finish as much as possible. By this time, I'd put so much work and time into the, my chair and Peter had done such a great job of seeing things into the home stretch. I did not want to botch it by turning it into an amateur looking piece by doing a bad trim job or screwing up the fabric with a glue, etc. Which is where you're easy, which is where your easy to understand good tutorial gave me the confidence I needed. Beautiful. Finishing off this chair was very meaningful because my mother Paulette passed away one year to the day I finished it also my birthday. How about that, huh? Uh, throughout my life, my mother was very fond of recovering chairs, and so I felt like this was an homage to her creativity. Thank you so much for the online guidance while I was at home, avoiding you know what. Sometimes I sit for long, very long stretches of time just staring at my gorgeous chair. I thought she was going to say it at, at, at my video. <laughs> <laughs> But that's good too. That's better. I wish you and yours much health and happiness, Kathleen. I love that. Now see, you guys, all the 150 videos and uh, all the time we put into the on classes, online classes, probably the value of all that is, is this is little note that we got from Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen. I really appreciate that. So do we have any other questions before I get? I want to I wanna get to this before we run out of time because this is kind of kind of an interesting piece. I got 10 of these chairs, you guys, and um, they're, they're nice reproduction. They're shale back dining room chairs. They're, they're, they're a decent reproduction on the wood, but they really let the ball down. They, they, they drop the ball when it comes to the upholstery, and I'm sorry to say that. I'm gonna really um, make these a little bit better than they are, but I wanna show you First of all, no more questions, but uh, Jimmy just said that he's sick of the coke on here, Joe. I told Jimmy. him we're never, never letting it go. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, does this mean that he's got an, a, another favorite batting? I mean, Jimmy, I'll give you some choices on batting, okay? If, if you reconsider the, the, whole, the coconut fiber, I'm going to have to cancel that order, Patrick. Remind me, will you? Uh, yeah, wasted a lot of money. Oh, man. brother, Jimmy, thanks a lot. <laughs> now I'm going to have to fill that vat up with something else. But, Jimmy, uh, your choices would be other than the coconut fiber for batting. Okay, I've seen everything. I've seen hay, we've seen cotton, we've seen dacron, we've seen foam, we've seen latex. We've what about that stuff? Uh, the, the K-Park. Yeah, that, that was cool. K there you go, Jimmy. K-Park. That's very expensive. So I don't know. K-Park, though, has a really good quality to it. It's, it's a very nice quality to it. They're using K-Park now in uh, bed cushionings, by the way. Bed bedding. Uh, so, Jimmy, consider that for your next favorite batting. There's a world of batting out there, Jimmy. I'm sure you'll find another favorite. But I am, one for one, I'm disappointed that you're off coconut here. Sorry about well, that. Well, he may be off, but we're not. No, we're not off it. No, we'll never. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick says we're not off it. You're right. <laughs> but let's get to this chair. I just want to check the time out here. <clears throat> so, I want to show you this corner right here. They have they have a braiding or a gimp on this chair, which isn't really a desired finish in my opinion, okay? This chair must have been upholstered. It didn't come from the factory like this. I'm gonna show you another way of doing it though that looks much better than anything you're gonna find buy in the factory and this, this is not so hot. I'm gonna remove the gimp, right? And I, I did that over here, okay? Kind of clean this up a little bit, but this is a problem area. This is a transition point that we talk about a lot, especially on the online classes. Okay, so I'm going to get that to that point. I'm not going to use my staple gun. I'm just going to try to explain something here. I'm going to show you a little piece of the fabric. I'm going to actually cut a piece of the fabric off that's actually being used. So I think I'm going to run this this way, right? 
So before you do anything, let's say you're ready to upholster this and, you, and what you've done is you've stretched it and you've pin tacked it here and pin, or pin staple in the back and the front. You can make your cuts here and then secure your pleats here like this, right? But before you get anywhere near here, you have to prep this in order to get it ready for that nice transition that I'm going to show you. Okay, so what you want to do ideally is take a piece of scrap piping, usually a small piece, uh, not a heavy fabric, but maybe a lightweight fabric. And what you want to do is, believe it or not, I'm going to cut that to fit in here. And what you're trying to do is create a groove in here so that your, your fabric that you're going to be using is going to fit in here. I'll show you that in a minute. So this goes in here like so, right? Like that, you're gonna staple that in like that. Make sure that you're right even here. And look, I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch, which is about the thickness of your pipe in here, right in there, okay? And then when you upholster this, you're gonna get your pleat. Let's see if I can do this. Let's just take this out to show you. And you're gonna get it stapled in between the, the, the piping and near the edge here. Okay, and then your pipe, and then you're going to run your base welt after this is upholstered over here, right? And in this area here, what, what I do is I start here, I start here, and I come around, and then at this point, I measure to see how far over I am, and then I cut out the salvage around the leg, right? Just around the leg. You know, and you guys, if you do this properly and you know how to stretch fabric, if you're coming from over there and stretching the fabric to over here, sometimes you don't even have to glue it. So sometimes what I do is I'll staple here, I pull it tight to here and staple here and keep going and do the same thing over here. And then I go back and I see, well, can I move it? If I can't move it, it doesn't need to be glued. And the reason that is good is sometimes the glue drips, right? Believe it or not, it won't need gluing in most cases. So. That's your tip of the day right there. Um, I have a little bit more time. I want to show you something else about this. I'm going to have to fix on this chair. Um, I'm going to show you. They have this rubber webbing, which is really, look at it, it's, it's given way, you guys, right? So they use this to make the, uh, to make the chairs comfortable, believe it or not. And dining room chairs are not supposed to have any type of cave-in like that. It's not supposed to be soft. It's supposed to be firm. So originally these chairs were made with uh, a nice rolled edge, right? Webbing, jute webbing, which I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to replace with jute webbing. And then instead of foam, they would have a triple layer of, of horse hair in there and muslin and then, and then the fabric. So that's a firm seat. But the reason you want a dining room chair firm, I'm going to show you something. Is that when you're, let's just go over here. Let's pretend this is the dining room table. Our cameraman's awake. Our camerawoman, sorry. So I'm sitting here. Patrick, can you do me a favor? Yeah. <clears throat> come over. Come out here for a second. Yeah. Measure from the floor to my shoulder. Tell me what this is. Tell me what that is to my shoulder. Your shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get a new suit then? Yeah. What is 42. it? 42. Okay, so what I should be is 43, uh, 44, at least two inches tall. So what, what I'm doing is I'm sinking in and I'm not sitting at the table proper. So I need at least another two inches. So I have done redone dining room chairs and the people are so grateful and thankful that their whole life is, you know, some people's lives around the, uh, the, the kitchen, I mean the dining room table. So, you know, they have people slouch and everything else. So, so in other words, when I put the webbing in this, I'm going to be up at least two inches. And then when you're up, you're, you're kind of in a little bit more towards the table. So it makes a huge difference. So pol upholsterers really are uh, experts on making people comfortable. That's our job, you guys. You, you're hired. If you have a piece of problem piece like these are, ten of them, I'm looking forward to this job. I'm glad I have the work. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a real... Um, 
it's a real difference. You're going to make a difference in somebody's life. That's what I like about upholstery. But every piece of furniture should be looked at that. Every piece of furniture that's out there can be approved on. You can improve on it. So, so keep that in mind. And I'm really hopeful. Again, I'm going to say it again, you guys. Are you watching me? You're, you're about to launch a career. I would, I would really encourage you. This is the time to do it. Because I think once, the, once this is all over, behind us, this pandemic, I think people are going to be, it's just going to be exploding with, uh, reupholstery is going to have a, a, a resurgence like it's never seen before. Um, and there's going to be a lot of reasons for that. But I'm really hopeful and confident. And I hope, I want to be here for you guys when that happens. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, you guys, thank you for supporting me through this time. And unless there's other questions or comments, I think, I think that's going to do it. And thank you for everybody from, you know, uh, checking in from all over, all over the world, really. We appreciate it. And happy upholstery. We'll see you I next time. I just want to update people oh. uh, who bought the yearly subscription on the site. Uh -huh. Since we're behind now, we might not be releasing because we can't get people in here to film. Right. Right. So we've got to figure something out so they still get their year. So, right. you know, if it, still, if it expires, we'll... We'll do some, uh, yeah. we'll figure it out. We'll take care of our, our customers that we always do. And uh, Eric is still waiting on a custom video. I was thinking about that. I have that sofa still. The customer has not picked the fabric out for it. Of Maybe course, we'll, it might be delayed now with all this going on. But we haven't forgotten. And, yeah, and we'll until next time. She, I think she had two, right? Did she have two? Yep. So we'll, we're definitely still doing it. <laughs> yep. And uh, thank you, Erica. Thank you for all our supporters. And I'm glad to see that uh, things are... Uh, Things are looking up, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. We've been here every week for you, and we'll see you next week. Take it easy.